Hey, everybody. This is my dear sister and friend, Diana, and I'm going to let her tell her story, and we'll come back and talk to you. We'll open up the phone lines after she's done. Go get them, my sister. Thanks. Can you hear me? I uh, took it upon myself to go to my fast and testimony meeting in my ward a week ago last Sunday. I, God put it on my heart that I needed to witness. God put it on my heart to go before my old ward at fast and testimony meeting. Many of you who are ex-Mormons or current Mormons know what that is, a fast and testimony meeting. It's where people get up on Sunday and uh, anyone can go to the microphone and bear their testimony. Um, and I, God had put it on my heart days before that this is what I needed to do and I, I fought it, <laughs> but the Lord won. So I, uh, I went into the meeting and I didn't take any papers with me when I went. I had prepared something ahead of time and had worked on it, but I did not want to get up in front of the group with papers in hand. That's typically not what they do. I just wanted to be able to speak from my heart. And uh, I will refer to my text tonight, however, probably. But I, uh, is there sound? Okay. <laughs> But uh, I went in after the sacrament, which is like a communion, and I went in and sat up close to the front, and then when there was an opening, I went up on the stand behind the pulpit. And as I walked in, I just said, oh Lord, please don't let my bishop get up and, and remove me, because they do do that from time to time. And I asked him to please just help me to select my words very carefully. So I will now tell you exactly what I said to them. Brothers and sisters, it is very different to be up here in front of you under my circumstances. Many of you have contacted me. You have left me voicemails. You have sent me letters, you've even left me gifts, and I have not responded. And I'm sorry, I apologize, because I was in mourning. I have left the church, and it's, very, it's a very, very hard thing to do, something that you're indoctrinated in, in your, your whole life, and it was so difficult for me, and I do apologize. But what I know now um, there is no way that I can come back. There is a very, very vast chasm between us. I love the LDS people. I love the organizations of the church and the, the many programs. It's a great way to raise a family. And I love so many of you. I remember rubbing elbows with you and it it was so wonderful, but it was missing something very, very big. The good fruits of the church, there is so much. And the humanitarian efforts. And I myself received help from the church from time to time, and I, I appreciated it so much. And it got me through some tough times. My pastor, they loved that word, even says that there is a lot that the Christian community can learn from the LDS Church in regards to its programs. I know that the Bible is the word of God that has been preserved through the ages by his hand. There's so much evidence from archeology, span artifacts, history, so much that points to its authenticity. I know this, I did my homework. Ground is being unearthed every day with more and more proof of the people and the places in the Bible. It's amazing, the Bible has opened up to me and it's, it has changed my life tremendously. In Matthew 24, 35, 
And again, in Luke 21, 33, Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And then in John 8, 31 through 32, Jesus says, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that's exactly what I did. I looked for truth. It was a challenge given to me to read the Bible and to look for truth, and that's exactly what I did. And I received the truth by reading the Bible and praying to the Lord, by trusting in Him. It's all about truth. That's all there is, is truth. I had been walking around with blinders on for years, 60 years. And when, when the Lord showed me the truth, the scales literally fell off my eyes. I have a strong relationship, saving relationship and personal relationship with Jesus. I know when I die, I'm going to live with my Lord and my King forever. I know that sounds like a, a big statement, and it is. And is it because I'm a good person? <laughs> no, I'm a wretch, just like the song says. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I was lost and now I'm found, was blind and now I see, and I truly was blind. I am saved because I accepted the free gift, the gift of grace. And then I repented of all my sins and turned myself over to the Lord and just said, do with me what you will. It has nothing to do with me. It's all God. In Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, we read, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not after all that I can do. I could never do enough. That's like standing at the foot of the cross. Almost seems blasphemous to even say. Looking up into Jesus' face and saying, what you did wasn't good enough. So maybe you can meet me halfway and maybe you can pick up the slack for me. It's unbelievable to me that people even think that way. I cannot earn my way to heaven. None of us can. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. The cross has taken on such a new meaning to me. I revere it and turn to it every day. It's a significant part of my worship. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1.18, we read, For the preaching of of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But for we which are saved, it is the power of God. I mean, that's just, it's just awesome. I know the true gospel of Jesus Christ has never left this earth. Yes, there's been small apostasies and some big apostasies, but there's always been Christians on the earth since the time of Christ. In Matthew 18, 30, Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. That's, that's probably one of my favorite scriptures. Praise God. 
He lives in me and I in him. I'm a born again Christian. I never thought you'd hear me say that. I have heard many say, oh, you born again Christians, you just think you can go out and eat, drink and be merry and do whatever you want and you're gonna be saved. That may be true of some people, but if you are truly born again, you long to please the Lord. You know, good works, and we hear about that in the LDS church so much, but good works is a byproduct of being born again. I attend a non-denominational church where my pastor teaches the Bible verse by verse. And then I also attend a Bible class every week and on occasion twice a week. I love the Bible. I have learned so much. It's all about Jesus. Once again, I have been assured of a spot in heaven forever with my Lord and King. I love all of you. I really do. And I say this in his holy, holy name, Jesus. Amen. here girl so tell us how was how was the response the response can you hear me here I'm gonna hand you this okay just hold it out there like that the response as I was talking well when I first walked in many people looked up and huh she's come back she's called herself to repentance I, I mean I'm assuming that's what was going on in their heads and they were so happy to see me. And uh, I thought they're probably not gonna be happy much longer. <laughs> but uh, as I was speaking, and as soon as I said I have left the church and started talking about the Bible, and especially about grace, and the comment about standing at the foot of the cross, people were literally shaking their heads they were looking down. I was sure that my bishop would probably ask me to leave. You could have heard a pin drop in there and there were probably 250 people there that day because there were baby blessings and eight year old kids that had been baptized and there were a lot of families there. I'm hoping that what I said touched some people, but uh, my stake patriarch was there, he's a good friend of mine. In fact, he gave me my patriarchal blessing just a few years ago. And he and his wife were very appalled. It was clear that they were very agitated. And I think he was getting very close to coming up because he was the highest order of priesthood there in the building at the time. And, and I saw him almost raise up a couple of times, but he didn't. And uh, when I left, there were probably only there were, I think, three people that came up and talked to me. And I had known many, many of these people and been very, very close. And uh, after I was through, there were a few more testimonies. A man that had been in my bishopric, who I was very close to and loved him very much, stood up, raced up and said, I know we're short on time, but he, he testified of the truthfulness, pardon me, truthfulness of Joseph Smith and Thomas S. Monson, that they have been called of God, and that Thomas S. Monson is here on this earth today, and that the Book of Mormon is true. You know, I honestly don't remember if he said anything about Jesus or not. Um, he could have, but most of it was about Joseph Smith. And uh, so I felt, I felt very shunned. Uh, I didn't leave afterwards. I just went down and sat with the congregation. And like I say, maybe three, four people talked to me. Hmm. So that was the reception. It uh, goes without saying, uh, an act of extreme courage. Uh, I would never do it. Uh, 
so uh, just really amazing. I didn't tell anybody, I don't think. Didn't tell me. I didn't know you were going to do it. I didn't know I was going to do it really until the day before for sure. Yeah. Can you share with the, the viewing audience um, a little bit about how you came to know the Lord and the, the difficulty, more about the personal difficulty and uh, hurdles that, that got in your way as you progressed toward coming out of Mormonism? Yes, I, uh, I was very active in the church. I had just got my temple recommend back after many years because I hadn't paid tithing and you have to pay a full tithe to go to the temple. And I had done that for a couple of months and got my recommend back and did attend the temple once. And uh, there was something lacking there and I knew it. And I was uh, the choir director, the ward choir director, and I taught Relief Society. I was active in every, I was a visiting teacher and I was on every committee and oh, it was my life. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then Bishop Earl and Carla, who many of you know, came out of the church and uh, I was appalled. And I fought with them for several months. And Earl kept saying to me, Diana, would you just, just open the book of John and just read Jesus' words. Don't read anything else. We're talking about the Bible here. You know, what can, this can't hurt you. So I swallowed my pride and took him up on that challenge. And I read Jesus' words in the book of John. And then I started to read the entire four gospels and all of Jesus' words. And I prayed and prayed that God would show me the truth. And he did. But then the hard part really came and it's coming out and telling people and you're almost ashamed. You know, there isn't there a scripture, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ or I'm not sure just what it is, but I almost felt ashamed because I didn't believe in the Mormon church and they, you were on a guilt trip as a Mormon the entire time. And uh, so I had to get over that and I had to face people and I had to face the fact that I was hurting people, people in my family, people that I loved very much. And I had to realize, and Sean helped me with this, that I love Jesus Christ more than I love anybody else, including my children. You know, it's tough because your kids, wow, your kids and your grandkids, you love them so much. And I said to Sean several times, I don't, I just don't, I love Jesus, but I don't have this great feeling for this huge love for him. And Sean told me, you know, it will come. It will come with time and it is here. And uh, it's been hard. And then I came up to campus and saw you and, and you, mm. <laughs> and you told me, nice you told me that, uh, you told me that, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I could keep going to church as a Mormon. You can be a born again Mormon. Go ahead and go, Diana, that's fine. <laughs> but you know, he knew. And I went for a while and I remember when on Easter Sunday, somebody got up and they talked and talked and talked. And then at the end they said, well, it's Easter Sunday. So I guess maybe we should talk about Jesus. Oh, and I was up on the stand cause I'd been leading the choir and under my breath, I said, oh, do you think? And I, I don't know if anybody heard, but just things like this started happening. And I was in Relief Society and my patriarch's wife said, you know, Joseph Smith will be there with Jesus to judge all of the people born in this last dispensation. Hey. He will be there as your advocate along with Jesus. Oh, man. I raised my hand and said, I, you know, I am so sorry, but there, that's not going to happen. And that's when they started seeing me come out. And then I finally read your book. You gave me your book, A to Z. And it took a while and there were stumbling blocks and it is hard, but uh, I'm there and I'm so happy and so thankful. And do I have another minute or are we in a hurry? You, you do, but uh, hold, the, hold your thought. Let's take Steve from Vancouver and then we'll come right back. You're the microphone gal. Steve, you're on Heart of the Matter. Steven? Yep. You're on the air, my friend. Oh. Hey, man. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. Can, can you still hear me? Yes, you're fine. If you're, okay. 
Listen, you know what? Uh, Diana actually touched on the question I have, okay? Like, I am a guy that's not a, uh, I wouldn't say I'm not, I don't know, man. I've been searching. And she said something there that reflects the question I have, which is, um, and the only way I can put it, first of all, I want to say, uh, I stumbled on you the, like two days ago or something on YouTube, and you were rocking the Sammy Hagar look, and I was like, you were talking and with humility and about your failings and about who you are as a human being. And that, to me, exemplified uh, what I was looking for, you know, in terms of spirituality. And the question I have is, when I, from my upbringing with Jesus Christ and with like, you know, just the, on the sort of periphery of my life and all that kind of thing, the only way I can put it is like, when you look at, if you were looking at, and I don't mean this in a bad way, if you're looking at a picture of an apple, you can't taste it, but you can see it, right? Yeah. And so when I think of Jesus Christ and what I know of him and grace and humility and love and compassion, and I see people like Diana, like yourself, who are filled with that spirit, um, how do you get it? Well, how, like, I personally feel like, um, like, I don't know, like maybe it's not... Like God saying, like, hey, man, not, no, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I mean that sincerely. Like, I, um, you know, I've been, uh, I don't want to get into it, but it's been a rough life and a rough, you know. So, Steve. I, just, I'm a, I know I'm a spiritual being, you know. Steve, were you raised a Christian? I was, I guess I was baptized when I was a kid. Okay. But I've gone through a whole life of, like, drug abuse, um, even sexual abuse when I was a kid. Uh huh. Um, and it, you know what, man? I'm 48 years old, and I just lost everything. You know. Yeah. Um, that was meaningful to me, and uh, I don't want to get into it. You know. Okay. Let, upset, but um, let me let me uh, hand this uh, off to Diana, who will give you her insights, and then I'll give you mine on what you can do to help get you know the picture of Jesus from being just a a, a two dimensional photograph into your heart and have it become a, a three or four dimensional uh, relationship. Here's Diana. Well, my advice would be, number one, do what I did, read the Bible, especially the words of Jesus, and pray, and pray that God will show you the truth, and, and trust that he will. You have to have that faith, and, and, and you know, repent of all your, your old sins. Christ's blood paid for all that. Uh, you don't need to carry around that guilt. So pray, trust, read the Bible. I would agree. And Steve, uh, uh, if you haven't done this, it's not really you gripping and trying to figure it out. It's, it's dying to it. Just really fall back and let all your stuff go after you've, uh, as you're going through this. And then what Diana said, when you're reading that word, there's a reason for that. And Ephesians tells us that it washes away all the stuff that you've accumulated in your mind and, and heart through your life of sin and religion and everything. So she gives you that advice because as you take that word in, it will start to erode away all the philosophies that have kept God and you apart. God is there. He's waiting, but you've been a little bit distant. So just try it in that way if that helps at all. And then if you stay on the line, we'll send you a book that might help. Is that all right? That's awesome. I, I just really appreciate you uh, taking the time. You know? It's our pleasure, Steve. God bless you. We're going to hang on the line. We're going to put you on hold and someone will take your address. Thank you very much. Okay, hold on. Hold this, will you? Yes. There's the hold button on this thing. Uh. All right, someone pick up one. We're going to go to Lynn in PA. Say it. Lynn, hi. You're on Heart of the yeah. Matter. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Lynn. Hi, I just wanted to thank you guys for doing this show. Um, I talked to Sean on the phone one time whenever I called about getting creeped out about the endowment ceremony. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for doing this show. You're welcome from my from my standpoint. And from mine. It's Sean's show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a fine job, young lady. <laughs> hey, Lynn. You don't have to what? How you doing, Lynn? Are you uh, are you progressing in your faith? Are you, is, are you pulling away from the Mormon thing? 
I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. I'm so scared to tell them that I want to leave the church. Yeah. Are, are, and, uh, you know, uh, are you in the Word? Are you reading the Word? Are you still going to that Christian church you told me about? Um, well, I haven't gotten a chance to go because my, because my mom hasn't been able to get me down to the car with me in the wheelchair. Okay. Well, uh, you too, if you stay on the line, can we send you a book? I, did I ask you that? You didn't ask me that, but... Um, well, now that we're on TV, uh, let me ask you. So I look really loving. <laughs> but can we send you a book? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Stay, we'll, uh, stay on the air, and we'll get one to you, Lynn. Thank you for watching and calling right. out there in Pennsylvania. Right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. All right, line two and line three is talking. Okay, uh, is there something else you wanted to share? I just wanted to quickly say that while I was preparing to do this, um, the week before I'd been sitting here in church and and uh, I got the the message from the Lord that I needed to witness and I thought well you know that's that's true I do need to do that and then it said in your fast and testimony meeting and I went oh you know I, I don't know about that and that Saturday I was studying and I've been reading Psalms so it didn't just fall open but I I read in Psalms 32 verse 8 I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And then in, th in Psalm 34, verse 3, it said, O magnify the Lord with me. I was getting some strong messages here. Then in Psalm 35, 18, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. That kind of was my, my answer right there. And then, let me turn quickly to Matthew, verse 10, ver, or, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verse 19. This is what really did it for me. Take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. It was a done deal. I knew what I needed to do. That was all. I just wanted to, to mention that. Very good. We have some operators uh, clearing a couple calls still. So, Diana, stand here with me. We have an emailer say, my question is, I'm LDS. This is a non-confrontational approach. What is your translation of Amos 3.7? Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his will unto his servants, the prophets. It's a passage that the LDS stand by, being that they believe they have modern-day uh, prophets and apostles who receive revelation, and they will stand on the idea that, listen, he, God says there in Amos uh, that he will never do anything unless he reveals his will through his servants, the prophets. So, Sean, uh, Diana, where are your prophets in your Christian church revealing the will of God? And he wants to know how he would respond to that. Well, I would respond to it in three ways. First and foremost, I would say, if that was true, what happened when Malachi was done all the way till when uh, Jesus and John the Baptist ministry came? That was 400 years of silence. Surely things happened then. The Lord God did not reveal to anything through the prophets at that time. How come? Because it was the Amos 3 7 is talking contextually about that point in time and God dealing with the children of Israel in a specific way. The second thing I would say is if you read Hebrews 11, excuse me, Hebrews uh, 1 1 through 3, it says God in different times and in different places has revealed his will through his servants, the prophets, has in these last days revealed his will through his son. Son, look at that. She's just trained like a little monkey. Because uh, this is a cult, you know. Uh, and so through his son. And so if you have the son come, who the prophets are testifying of, right? Yeah. And the prophets are saying he's coming, he's coming. And the son comes. What do you need prophets for anymore? 
The final question I would ask is, if you what you say is true, did the Lord reveal to your prophet that the tsunami was going to hit Indonesia? Did your prophet, did the Lord reveal to the prophet that the Twin Towers were going to fall? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his will through his servants, the prophets. So I put it back on you. If that's so, did your prophet warn the world of these uh, impending calamities? No, 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 and no. And the reason is we take the Bible contextually, we look to see what the general message is from Genesis to Revelation, and we don't cherry pick and choose to try to prove our point that Thomas S. Monson, corporate CEO and uh, empire leader is a prophet of God. Okay, uh, anything that you would like to add to that? You know, I just want to say one thing. I hated Sean. <laughs> um, I watched him on and off for I'm, this is changing the subject, I know, but for two or three years, and then come to find out Bishop Earl was doing the same thing, and we kind of came together on that. But I, I really, he planted seeds, and it helped me, and I love the man now. I just had to, I do know him. I, he's, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I had to point that out. Yeah. Awesome like a snail, you know, how, how awesome they are when you look at it. Listen, uh, we have Anthony from Toronto, Canada. A lot of Canadians watching tonight. Let's go to Anthony on line two. You're on Heart of the Matter, Anthony, with hey, Diana Sean. and Sean. Hello, Anthony. You're on the air. How are you guys tonight? Doing well. Great. Great. I really, I really enjoyed your... Um your, your story on, on how you came to know the, the Lord. Thank you so and, much. Uh, I had something similar. I, I think, I think I, I've called like three weeks in a row now. So Sean knows my story, but I was also LDS at one point. And I, um, I read the Bible and, and I found the Lord. I was born again. And this Sunday I was actually baptized. Like I got like, the, like an actual real baptism now, not by Mormons, you know? Yes. And, uh, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was great. And it was it was funny because right before my baptism, the pastor asked me to speak about my testimony on how I found Christ, and I mentioned how I was LDS. So, you know, hopefully any of these people who were sitting there in the audience, you know, the Mormons will remember what I told them. I said how my life I was lied to, I was told I had to do things to be saved, and I, now I finally come to know the Lord. That it's through His grace and His mercy that I was saved, Not, nothing that I did myself. That's awesome. And you know, by saying those things, you are planting seeds. Exactly. And uh, I want to say uh, what, you were, what you were saying, to truly know that it takes being born again and to read the Bible with the spiritual eyes. Because I want to kind of share with you guys something. Because I was um, discussing the Bible with a Mormon over Facebook. And his, his response was very similar. Uh, Sean, you remember that guy, John O'Fallon? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this guy, um, so anyways, I, I was talking about the Bible saying how I left the LDS church because I believe that Jesus Christ and faith in him is all I'll, I will ever need to be saved. And he kept bringing up how the Bible was, was, was wrong, this and that. And um, I told him that the Book of Mormon was plagiarized from many stuff in the Bible and other sources. And yes. then this was his response. Um, should I use like the snobby Mormon tone or just read it normally? No, use the tone. It just adds to the whole right. thing. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Right. This proves to me that you are prepared to lie, cheat, steal, conceal truth, falsify lies, to report as truth to make your point. <laughs> your you. very eternal soul is in danger of total condemnation before God. All your faith will not save you, as God the Father of all hates a liar. You are one. Therefore, I call you to repentance. Give up this erroneous fight against God and his gospel. Set your pride aside and relearn the truth. Your education failed to teach you the great importance of integrity, honesty, and humility. No amount of learning from the schools of men can save you. Only a renewed faith in God will pull you out of this pit that you have made for yourself. That's amazing. I feel rebuked. Pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it, it Anthony. reminded me just of, of John O'Fallon when he said, uh, in the name of the Holy Methodist Priesthood, I rebuke you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Anthony, that's a great uh, uh, quote. And you know, that is their mindset. They really believe they are so holy and clean by their 
uh, doing their steps every week and month and year, that they have the right to talk to people in that way, and it has no bearing on what the Word says. One point I want to make really quick, Anthony, you're the second person today, uh, my friend Jock said this earlier, do you, you think you have to have spiritual eyes to read the Bible, and you just said the same thing, it is so important. Because we can see people who can read the Bible, read them. I mean, how often did you, you may not have studied it like we do now, but you read the Bible, didn't you? Read through it. Yeah. Oh, I opened it three or four times a year, and now I'm in it every day. I can't get enough. Yeah, because her eyes now see, and that's why we told that 14-year-old, listen. And that's why Diana said, you want to know, open the Bible, start reading in John. Because when the Holy Spirit touches you, you will start reading it in a way that you never could without the Holy Spirit. Great points. Thanks so much. Great job, Diana. A round of applause for Diana. I didn't want her to do a, she's swearing by the uh, anything. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We won't go there. Uh, listen, we are running out of time. Uh, I thank Diana for her courage and her willingness to share this uh, with you all. Uh, please share uh, with your neighbors and friends the program. Tell them where they can get it on HOTM.TV and uh, other places. We pray God's blessings upon you. We love you. You ready to point? We'll see you next week here on Heart of the Matter. Uh -huh.